Half 152, we are looking at section 3.7, uh, the first part. And what we're going to start to do in this topic is think about um, integrals when we have some infinite bounds involved or some sort of um, discontinuity inside the interval. And this chapter is broken up into a couple parts for us. Well, let's start with this idea. Uh, we're going to take the integral from A to infinity. So our bound now is infinitely long. And, and we do that for some function. So the way that we can patch this, we can deal with uh, quoting, uh, air quotes, plug in infinity into our answer, is we rewrite this as a limit. Uh, we just say the limit as something, t will be our dummy variable, goes to infinity. And then we just run it from a to t, and everyone feels much more comfortable about it. So that's just the way we do it. And notice we could also run from negative infinity to some value. We do the same thing. And then what we do is we worry about um, ways of finding limits as, a, as our values approach infinity, or maybe it approaches a zero where there's a, continu a discontinuity or something like that. And with these, if the limit exists, we say that it converges. And if it doesn't, we say that it diverges. And if it converges, it converges to a, a value, right? Like we can actually get a number value for it. And if it doesn't, if it diverges, then we just say, uh, no, <laughs> we can't find a number for it. And notice we could even have the integral of like the function over everything, let's say. And if this was the case, we would break it up into pieces because we know we can break up uh, integrals with addition. And I chose zero here as the spot to break it up, but you know, it could be anywhere really. All right, well, let's do a problem that's kind of like this then. And let's let our, our function be one over X. And we want to look as it runs from one to infinity. So one over X, you know, the graph of it is, here's one. Um, and it just keeps going. We know that this gets closer and closer to the X axis, but never actually gets there. Right, one tenth, one one hundredth, one one thousandth, and so on. And so, if we we're going to look at the area underneath this curve as that goes on forever, and the question is, does it converge? Does it does it diverge? Well, let's see. So we're going to take the derivative from one to infinity dx. And so what we're going to do is we're going to think of that as a limit, right? The limit as t approaches infinity, as t gets really really big, what does this thing tend to do? And we know how to do that integral. So it's this. And then we can say then that is still the limit. So we know that natural log of 1 is 0. And now we have to think about the natural log of really big numbers. Uh, well, let me think about this. Natural log, if I think about the graph of natural log, uh, it looks like this. So as this keeps getting bigger, this keeps going up. Right, this will always increase. We know that about natural log because it undoes e. E can spit out anything. Right, it's the inverse of e. So uh, since that grows without bound, a natural log, it doesn't have an asymptote somewhere. That means that this diverges. This goes to infinity. So we have like infinity minus zero. So we will say that this diverges. So that area, the size of that area, uh, is infinite. Kind of interesting. Okay. Um, this is where it might start to get kind of weird. Let's take that same shape, uh, run it from one to infinity. And notice, like on this notation, that hard bracket means one's included, and the soft bracket means infinity is not included. It's not an endpoint, which hopefully makes sense because, like, it's not a number, like, it, it doesn't end. Um, so we've got that shape still. It's going on forever in this direction. And let's rotate it around the x-axis. So we get this, this shape. And uh, I want to find the volume of that solid when this is rotated about the x-axis. So if I take a disk out of here, I know that my, my radius is 1 over x. This is my change in x. Uh, that means I need area of a circle, which is pi r squared. So it's pi times the radius squared. So if I square that, it's 1 over x squared. 
So this is going to be my integral from 1 to infinity, pi times 1 over x squared dx. Now, th this area was, was infinite, and now we're doing the volume after we rotate it around. Okay. Um, take the pi out of there. I'll, re I'll take the pi out of there, rewrite it as a limit to deal with that infinity. So then now I will uh, take the integral. So far, so good. So, uh, so then now I still have pi times this whole thing. So pi times the limit as t approaches infinity of negative 1 over t minus negative 1 over 1. Right? Evaluate those. Plug in t, subtract, plug in 1. And this is just plus 1. Still got this pi out here. And then I've got the limit uh, as t approaches infinity of negative 1 over t. All right, negative 1 over t. Well, we know what that looks like. That looks like this. And as t gets really big, this thing goes to 0. Right? Like uh, 1 over a million, 1 over a 1,000. Oh, it's negative, so it actually, actually looks like this, but it's still going to 0. 1 over a million, 1 over a 1,000, 1 over 5 uh, billion. It's closer and closer to zero. So we have pi times zero plus one. So it's pi. So this is a very strange uh, result. The area under that curve is, is infinite. It's, its area diverges. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But if we rotate it, the volume is pi, uh, is finite. Here are a couple more, uh, a couple more things to think about. Take this integral. From negative infinity to zero. So we're going to let this limit as t approaches negative infinity, t to zero. You know this one, or you can get there, you can look it up. It's inverse tangent. All right, so inverse tangent. I remember what inverse tangent does is uh, this tells you uh, the slope and it returns the degrees. One half times the inverse tangent of 0, 0 divided by 2, minus uh, 1 half times that limit of that. So let's think about this. Uh, t is approaching negative infinity. So this is going to get really big. So that angle is going this way until it's pointing almost straight down, right? It's, it's going to be more and more negative, more and more negative. The slope is getting infinitely steep in a negative direction. If it's infinitely steep in a negative direction, it's going downward. Well, that would be at uh, negative 90 degrees, but we're in radians, so negative pi over 2. So this is, uh, oh, and tangent of 0, 0 degrees is, uh, a 0 slope is, is at 0 degrees. So this is a 0. This is 1 half, minus 1 half times negative pi over 2 which is going to give us a positive pi over 4. So we have these infinite, um, these infinite spaces, right? These infinite ranges that can yield finite areas. You can add up a number of infinite things and get a finite value, which hopefully makes sense. We've been doing that with integrals all along. So we just did this thing with, with uh, arctangent, with inverse tangent, and we did a little something earlier with natural log. So let's get a couple of limits up here, just, just so you um, can reference them and, and know them. Uh, if something's infinitely steep, it's straight up. So the inverse tangent of that would be pi over 2. It would approach pi over 2, right? 90 degrees, straight up. Um, if it's infinitely steep in a negative direction, it's going down, uh, straight down. So negative 90 degrees, negative pi over 2. Couple more, as t gets really big, 1 over t tends to 0, right? 1 over 10, 1 over 100, 1 over a million, 1 over a billion, closer and closer to 0. Uh, as t gets really big, uh, e to the negative t, remember a negative exponent, this would be 1 over e to the t, so it's basically 1 over something that's getting bigger. So it's this, that also equals 0. Uh, natural log, uh, we saw the graph of natural log, we know it looks like this. As t gets bigger, this grows without bound. As we get closer and closer to zero from the positive side, it tends towards negative infinity. So neither of those diverge. So again, these are some things to, uh, to just know. You'll use them a bit. And one more uh, limit tool for us 
is uh, L'Hopital's rule. So when you end up with uh, things that are in the form 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, um, remember L'Hopital's basically says this. Um, think of this as g of x over f of x. So as x approaches some limit, not necessarily infinity, and we have this, as long as one of these two conditions is met, it's the same as uh, the same limit and the derivative of the two functions. So if you don't see it right away, we can uh, use L'Hopital's rule to find what that limit is. Here's an example. Say I have the limit as x approaches infinity of x squared times uh, e to the negative x. So if I think about x getting bigger, this x squared is going to tend towards infinity. Uh, but this e to the negative x is going to tend towards zero. So I have this indeterminate form, this infinity to zero. But it's not in the form like these. So what I can do, though, is I can rewrite it so it is. Um, e to the negative x, that is the same as e over x. Remember, that's what negative exponents do. Um, they, they are division. And so now I have infinity over infinity. Now it's in this form. Now I can use L'Hopital. So if this is true, that means that I can take the derivative of each of them. And the derivative of x squared is, is 2x. Derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And this is still going to infinity, and that's still going to infinity. So I'll just do L'Hopital's again. Take the derivative again. Okay, and so then now I have a constant over something that's getting really big. Okay, so 2 over, let's say this, is, this ends up being 10, 2 over 100, 2 over a million. This is that uh, 1 over 2 case. So this goes to 0. So remember L'Hopital's, you got to get into this form 0 over 0, infinity over infinity in order to use it, and then you can take derivatives as many times as you need and uh, sure hope that it works out. <laughs> Here's another example. So as x tends to 0, um, this would be 0 times 0 uh, from the right. Oh, no, this would be 0 times infinity, sorry. So if I want to make this an infinity, times, uh, an infinity over an infinity, uh, I could think of, so square root of x is x to the 1 half. I could think of this as 1 over x to the negative 1 half. Right, x to the negative one half is one over square root of x. So as x goes to zero, this one over really small from the right, right, one over ten, one over a hundred. Um, nope, sorry, one over point one, one over point oh oh one, one over point oh oh one. This is going to infinity as well. Sorry, that should be a one. So this actually gives me an infinity as well. So I can think of this as thing going to infinity. And that thing going to infinity. Now I have that indeterminate form. So now I can do that. So let's uh, take derivative of both top and bottom. So we're there. Uh, let's clean this up now before we try and plug in zeros into it. And let's see, this would be the same as uh, negative 1 over 2 times x to the 3 halves. Right, but I'm dividing by that. So if I think, right, it's like this divided by that. So if I'm dividing by that, that's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So this, this should be negative. And this 1 over x, this is uh, x to the negative 1 half. So if I combine these, I've got this. And now I can plug the 0 in, and this uh, settles down to 0. All right, uh, that's a quick little L'Hopital's review. Um, I'm sure that you can you can look up past past notes or other things for more L'Hopital's if you need it. Uh, let's do one more example. All right, so we are here, and notice we're running from negative infinity to infinity. So officially, really, we should break this up into. this, and now if either of these diverges, the whole thing diverges, right? Like they would both have to converge for this to actually give us a value 
So what's nice about this is we're doing the same integral. So let's just do that integral and then we'll, we'll deal with it from there. I'll do it over here, a little bit of space. So I've got that. And so then now I'm gonna do this integral. Um, I can do a little u substitution on this. I'm gonna let u be three x squared plus one. So du would be what? Six x dx. Okay, that's cool. So one half du is three x dx. Great. So we can do that substitution. I've got a integral one half uh, one over u. Oh, that's lovely. U. Whoops. Sorry, that should have been a du. So one half times the integral of that. And the integral of 1 over u, natural log. So we can substitute this part back in, uh, 3x squared plus 1. So we've got 1 half natural log of 3x squared plus 1. So there's what our integral ends up being. So let's plug those in. And, uh, well, if I plug a 0 into here, it's going to be 1 half. I'm just going to pull the 1 half out of the whole thing. Uh, natural log of 1 minus the limit as t goes to infinity of natural log of 3t squared plus 1. Okay, right now, this is going to grow without bound, right? t is going to go to infinity. This gets really big. We know as natural log uh, gets bigger, the input for natural log gets bigger and bigger. Natural log gets bigger and bigger. So this whole thing diverges. Wow, that's a lot of writing to get... Uh, no answer. All right, so that is, um, that's the idea. Just a little tack on top, uh, taking the limit uh, off of all of our integral work that we've been doing. Give the, uh, all those assignment questions a try. You message me with any questions that you have or post them in the forums, and uh, good luck.